Yes, sir. We, uh, I mean, the president and the FBI took white supremacists off of the terror list, which is really the problem. If you can't consider them terrorists, you can't fight them like you would they were a terrorist, and they were the actual terrorist threat that we have in America right now. Mm. Anybody else? I just want to say a few words from the close. Once again, I want to thank everybody for coming. I look in the audience and I see a lot of new faces. First time, first time people coming to me. I hope you uh, have got some. I hope you come back. I hope you can talk to your friends. Have your friends to come so we can fill this room up. So we can do some things. But everything that's been said about what's going on in this country. Like Ryan said, you know, we got representatives who can call and fly from planning to uh, let them know how we feel. But the best place, the best place to really get their attention is going out, going out. It's about going out, that's right. Mm -hmm. That is the best place to really, we can call, which is great, we need to call. But we also need to talk to our backyard neighbor, our ones down the street. Our aunts, uncles, cousins, friends from out of the different states, different places, and let them know, hey, you got to start talking. You got to start voting. If you, if you haven't asked anybody lately, if they're a registered voter or uh, did you vote, uh, uh, if you have anything to do with voting, then, then we're messing up. But we got to vote. The best way to get their attention is to vote them out. We don't need to vote for too high, really, to be true. As Donald Trump and his cousin, uh, what's his name? Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. If we can get done to two hours, I'll take the rest of the jump scan and say, hey, I'm going to do something because uh, they ain't joking. But if we, turn, if we get turned around, sky in the blue, and go across the state and start doing some things, I think we can make a move and start doing things. We just got to. We got to work. It's, it's not it's not a thing where we just come, just come to this meeting and talk about it and sit on our hands. We have to get up and actually really do what we said we're going to do. We got to vote. We got to beat them streets. We got to encourage other people to run, to vote, and to get those people out off. Because if, if you think that you're going to get somewhere with Donald Trump, and your my name is Anderson. My name is not Trump. I don't have a prayer in hell to help me to get anything, but my name is not Trump. If your name is, last name is not Trump, I don't mean Trump that way down the line. I mean right up close to Trump. It's just like, and his grad, we're not getting anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere because you're not going to get anything. <coughs> man is, you know, I'm retired military. If I was military, I couldn't say that. But the man is crazy. So he's not my commander in chief anymore. He man is crazy. And you can't throw blame, you know, you can't throw blame on other people when you create the problem. And won't accept the responsibility. That's I think that's the worst part about this president. He said things and then he come back and he won't accept responsibility for it. If you do something and it's wrong, accept responsibility for it and go with it. Yes, sir. Are there any type of actions being taken to um, make the party more appealing to the younger generation? Uh, what type of plans do you guys have? Kind of what? What type of plans are you guys choosing to pull in more young people? This meeting is open to anybody that wants to come to it. That door doesn't open set. 65 and over. <laughs> it's open to anybody. <coughs> so if you got friends that, that, that want to come to this meeting, they're more than well. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't stop it until it's getting too young. Because I know, I think somebody's already mentioned in the room, we need you. We need you all to come out and vote. We, we need you all to come out and do that. Because that older generation, they gonna vote. It's our young people that's not voting. And that's what we need. So y'all got to come out and vote. Y'all got to use y'all network. My son, my son, uh, for, for many years, he gave
gets on his phone, Facebook, my book, whatever, and he used to get people from me to go sign up. I used to go on all over about all the second registered people to vote. And that's what y'all got to do. You all got to work. Our young people got to work. You know, if, if, the, if you all don't work, it's going to be the same old, same old. Our 3,500 people, 2,500 people are going to be voting. So you all got to come. So our door is open to you. But we welcome your suggestions because we need them. Yeah. You know, I'm not real, well, never mind. But yes, we, <laughs> we, we really welcome you guys' suggestions yeah, and your yeah. input. And we are receptive to it and want to hear it. And we want to plan, implement, and execute. But we need you guys to help us along the way. That's what I want. So we'll, yeah. If you got some suggestion of what we can do, I'll be one happy to talk to you about it so we can do it. So we can do that. But uh, like I said, we just got to work harder and, and, and do better. When we have activities, when we, when, we, when we start talking about, we start talking about fundraisers and doing certain things. I'm gonna be very honest. I don't want I don't want to discourage anybody from ever making a suggestion in this room. About how to how, how to make how to make money, how to suggest things. But when you bring something up, be willing to do what? Participate. Participate in it and work in it. Just don't bring stuff up and just think that oh, we go out here gonna do all the work, but that's not gonna happen. <coughs> we gonna work. We don't have a problem with working. But if you suggest something, be willing to work with it. This weekend, prime example. Was told that we need to have a voter registration drive in the 100 flight minute. Dr. Tan, Dr. Tula, Tyler, uh, Catherine, uh, Eric, uh, what's his name? Eric Nielsen. They don't know when it showed up. And I know people, and they were the only ones that talk about doing the fund, uh, the, the registration. What a model. I got back in touch with you. If you contact me, and you told me we didn't need anybody else. Right. So that's right, right. because we had, had, a, had a bunch of people. Okay, well, my staff is already taking up. But okay, I but, but, but I appreciate your volunteer. Some email, I emailed back. I did not get a response for several days. I emailed again. <coughs> and that gave you some ready to feel better. Um, yes, ma'am. One meeting, I think that I heard that there's the high school kids who are eligible or being the voter registration is being provided at the schools. Is that true? Or did I just read that? Once you turn eight, uh, eighteen, yeah. yeah. Once you turn eighteen, you can register to vote. This okay, time. but but is it is something being held at the high schools? Yes, I'm not uh, sure if that's a good suggestion. Well, and, and, and with that, I mean, maybe publicity or somebody could talk to government teachers or political science teachers, and it would be really nice if on a Saturday or even during, during a school <coughs> time period that the candidates could come talk to kids. A class session. A cl right, even a class session. You know, the, just to, to let these kids know that they are important. You want to make a difference with kids, and we all do. I mean, because it's it it goes with the education with right. kids with if they're in the future. Okay. <clears throat> and so, not just not just the high schools, but that's where it should start. But even the towns. I know at technical school they talk about voter registration and have that, but I have to try to get in. Is, is that some possible genius issue? There, there's a teacher out there now that's just is doing exactly what she's talking about. Uh, you got to be 17 and a half, you got to be 18 by, I think, the election today to vote. So mm -hmm. those are seniors that she's focusing on getting them registered. And most of them get registered when they get a driver's license anyway, but those that don't, uh, this is pushing the high school not to get them registered. And I, I would I would like to see it be like a big deal. And I understand you have to be a certain age, but 2020 is coming up too. It's yeah. 2019. And so maybe it could be in all seniors' classes or juniors and seniors. And it could be like.
like a big deal. Everybody gets excited about getting their driver's license. It's nice to hear people get excited about it. Next question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How you doing? Um, I'm Dexter Sharper, State Representative, District 177. And uh, so the ones that are new here, you know, I'm right here, one little, you know, face away and one phone call away if you need anything. But like you're saying, um, getting the young people involved, uh, one thing we're going to have to look at doing, just like the people that don't go out and vote regularly, then we have the younger people that we're trying to attract. Sometimes you have to go where they are and just not hope that they're going to come here or they got to know that we are friendly enough to feel that we will listen. I think that's what hurt a lot of organizations like this, that the, the people on the young people on the outside feel like, well, if I go there, there's just really a lot of just older people there doing things their way. They're not willing to listen. They're not willing to change. So I think if we can get out more and not just the young people begetting the young people, the older people actually going to the young people and willing to say, you know, we're looking for ideas. We need your help. If you do come and see what we have going on, we want to get your input after or whenever or during. So I think that's what we really need to do. And another thing, um, a lot of your faith-based uh, organizations, churches, I think they are not doing a great job right now in getting the young people involved in voting and a lot of these other things, or even really anybody. They're not using their platform other than just Sunday having church you have a good time, shout, go home, eat at the church, and that's it, and maybe a Bible class. This is a, these are, there are places where they have the facilities to do a whole lot more, not just on the voting end of things, but there's a lot of different social issues we have that the churches are not stepping up. So I would like to see us at some point, and I'd be very happy to help put it together, organize, or reach out, but I want to talk to a lot of the pastors in this ent entire community and let them know that they are not feeding uh, a lot of things that they need to be feeding to their members, okay? So I'm willing to be a part of that. And one thing they can do is get excited about change, which is the voting. So, if, I mean, you can pray all you want to. You can get on your knees and fast for 30 days or 40 days, 40 nights, whatever you want to do. But if there are some people in the office that need to go, that's not going to help. They're going to have to get out and vote. So they need to understand the power of voting. So if the churches are not... Uh, you, know, you always say praying for change, God change this, change that. He's letting you know, okay, you can pray to me and ask me about change, but you got to do something. You got to use wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on reaching the people that need to get out to vote so we can have change. So my commitment is to, for the rest of this year, for us to locate these pastors, get these pastors together, and let them know that we, they need to step up, to be honest, and we had to work a way to make that happen. So... That's just what I had to say. One last thing before, uh, before we dismiss. There is a need at the Board of Elections for workers. They're looking for poll watchers, bottom entry level, and poll for 